In this video, we're going to work out the inverse Laplace of this expression. So typically when you have something like this, you always want to try to factor first. So we need two numbers that multiply to 26 and add to negative 10. Well, two times 13 is 26, but that's not gonna give us negative 10. So we have to take a different approach. But again, your first approach should always be to try to factor. Factoring is too hard, so let's try a different approach. The second approach is to complete the square. So let's go ahead and take the denominator and complete the square. So I'll do it over here. So we have s squared minus 10s plus 26. So recall when you're completing the square, you take this number, divide it by two, and you square it. So we have negative 10 over two, that's negative five. And if you square negative five, you get 25. So negative five squared is equal to 25. So what we have to do is we have to write it like this, s squared minus 10s plus 25. We have to add a 25 there. But we have a 26 here already. So in order to get from 25 to 26, we just have to add one, so plus one. So again, you first try to factor it, and if you can't, you resort to completing the square. So completing the square means that you take this number, divide it by two, and then square it to so 25. So we wrote it down again, s squared minus 10s plus 25, and then we were missing a one to get to the 26, so plus one. So now this factors, this thing here is called a perfect square trinomial. So it always factors, and I just know it looks like that, I have it memorized, and I know that you just always divide by two. So divide by two, and you get negative five. Boom, there it is, beautiful stuff. And then this is, oh, I almost messed up, plus one. I was gonna put 26, that's super bad, right? Because this whole thing here is this. All right, so good stuff. So let's go ahead and rewrite what we have. So inverse Laplace of one over, and then we have s minus five squared plus one. So this is almost like a sign. You say, what's a sign? What do you mean? The inverse Laplace of k over s squared plus k squared. This formula gives you the sign of kt. I don't know if you remember that. So here, this is almost that. k is one, except we have s minus five. We want an s. So what we do is now we use the first translation theorem and we do a shift. So we write the inverse Laplace. And we're just gonna replace s minus five with s. So this is one over s squared plus one. Then you draw the line to indicate that you're performing the shift. Notice the line is here. It's not like on the outside because the shift takes place in the s space. So here we're going from s to s minus five. And then you close the bracket. So the reason we did this is because we want to use this formula. So now you see we can simply apply the formula where k is one and we'll get sine of t. So now that we've done the shift, this is going to be sine of t. And I don't know if you remember from before, but whenever you do a shift like this, you're gonna get an exponential, right? Shifts turn into exponentials, exponentials turn into shifts. So it's s minus a, that will give us e to the at. So s minus five is gonna give us e to the five t. And this, my friends, is the final answer to the problem. So again, recap. First thing you want to do is you want to try to factor it always. Always try to factor first. If you can't factor it in your head, try completing the square, and then uh, use the shift. Use the shift, and then when you use the shift, that gives you the e, right? That gives you the e. If it was s plus five, you would have an e to the negative five t. And don't forget, the line goes wherever the s is. So. S is here, so that's where you put the line. I hope this video has been helpful. Take care.